Hi, I am so glad you're here. Today we're going to start in on watercolors and we're going to maybe do some basics just so you can kind of get acquainted with them. If you don't have watercolors, remember they're at my first gate um, on my driveway. And I, for those of you that are here or that don't live here, I would love to send you your own watercolors, but I don't have your addresses. And I feel really bad. Okay, I want to dedicate this um, lesson to my dad, Ted Rand. He was an illustrator, portrait painter, commercial artist, commercial illustrator. And I was so lucky to grow up with, with, with a parent who did that kind of thing. I would come home from school, of course, and do my homework. Mostly do my homework. Sometimes do my homework when I really should have been doing my homework. But I'd go back to his studio and um, he just had art stuff all over the place and I got to draw and draw some more and paint and he never really gave me any lessons but he always really encouraged me and he would point out things where I could do better and one thing he always said was to practice 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 so um, and I never stopped and and I'm lucky so let's start out with basic watercolors this is just a really easy one in a tray this is the mixing area and then I look at these colors here as your supply. Um, move paints to here. The importance of kind of washing your brush between things is, is, is kind of critical because then you don't muddy up the colors and it keeps things, you'll get more use out of your, out of your watercolor. I also like, this is kind of interesting, tuna fish cans uh, to put my water in for my watercolors. And the other thing is it gives you an opportunity to keep changing the water out and keeping it clean and you're not going to waste that much water. So I'm going to watch this. Let me get it all over my paper. I'm going to pour it there. There's my water. The other thing I'm going to have is I'm going to have a paper towel or any kind of uh, paper that you have that's kind of old and scrap paper that you can use for blotting or you could use a rag. A rag is fine too, like a paint rag. Um, here's your brush. This is your basic tool and it's really important to take care of your tools. This is, um, I'll tell you the parts, the handle, that wasn't too difficult to figure out. This is the collar, the metal part is the collar and then the bristles or the hair of the brush is, is the part that of course you, you paint with. Your brush is your friend and you wouldn't want to take your friend and turn your friend upside down and put their head and their hair in the water and leave them there. If you do that, um, what will happen is it will cause the bristles to, to kind of like splay out and you won't ever get a point. So let's go ahead and start so I can kind of give you just a little bit of, of an example here. I'm thinking about making green and you'll notice that there is no green in this uh, tray here. I like to make my own green because I can make different kinds of green. And, um, but just for just kind of beginning, I'm going to grab a little bit of the yellow, okay, with my clean brush and I'm going to put it there. Notice I'm not mashing my brush into the paint because that could cause the bristles or the hair of the brush to, to snap off and, and you'd lose the integrity of the brush. That's a big word. So there's my yellow. And then I'm going to rinse my brush off here in the water. Can you see that? I'm going to do that there. And then I'm going to clean my brush off here using my paper towel. And I could also, I could use my paint rag too. My dad had a paint rag. Uh, I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna make two kinds of green here. I'm gonna make a warm green. So I'm gonna grab that warmer blue, that more tropical blue. And ta-da, there's some green. I could lighten it up with more yellow to make it more of a spring green. And then the other green I'm gonna make, I'm gonna come back here, clean my brush off. And I'm gonna grab yellow again. Notice that my paints are staying nice and clean. And notice that I'm using just a really light touch with my brush. There's different sizes of brushes, of course, but this is the one that came with the watercolor set and I happen to like it. And I'm gonna grab the cooler blue here. And I'm gonna make, look at, a little bit more of an olivey green. Not quite as warm and springy. Let's try it out on, these are scrap boards from a frame shop. They will sometimes sell, not very expensive, these, these really nice scraps. You've got this beautiful white surface and it won't buckle or warp when you put watercolor on it. And so that's why I kind of like these. The other kind of paper you could use is watercolor paper, which you can buy. But you know what? If you don't have either of those regular paper it might buckle or warp a little bit and I'll show you what about what that is. The other thing I can use when, when doing watercolors is I cut up an old kitchen sponge 
and also Q-tips. And um, these are really interesting tools that you can use them just like with brushes for, for really fun effects. And it's always nice to kind of explore and sort of push what you're doing a little bit so that you can um, not only have fun, but, but become skilled at this, which I'm pretty sure you will. We're going to start out with some, some of the techniques that, that I use. And look what happened while we were setting everything up. I accidentally um, got my uh, brush on my uh, little watercolor board here, and I'm going to have some fun with that. I'm not going to go switch to a new board. I like, when I'm doing watercolors on a small area like this, to use a little less paint and a little less water, so I've got a little more control over my brush. I can do something like where I go like this, I'm going to do like say grass and just, just where I, I, I put the brush down like this and I quickly bring it up in a way. Actually let's do a little grass all the way across this. And we're going to, we're going to do a bunch of these, I'm going to kind of dry my brush off a little bit and then I'm not going to clean it off this time because I still like a little of that green left in here and I'm going to come back in with that, with that springier green, look at the effect we're getting with that. And again, I'm just putting my brush down. You know, it's kind of like having your brush dance across the paper. You don't ever want to squish your brush into the paper because that again, that's going to snap off the brush hairs or bristles and it's not going to give you as much, you know, as much control or line as you want. So that's just kind of a basic way to do grass. Here's another one. I'm going to do a curve like this. And again, I'm just Pulling it away from me gives me a little bit a little bit of control. I might even mix those two greens together. I can bring the point of the brush here, press down on the side a little bit, and then lift up, and I get like a little fern leaf. Again, the point, press down, lift up. And this way I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to put the point here, press down, bring it all the way in and lift up. Press down, bring it all the way in and lift up. That's probably a little bit light. You know what I just thought? Ferns actually have their little leaves every other one. Well, look at that effect. That's kind of fun. I have left a little bit of extra water on my brush. I'm going to go over these a little bit. So that, this may not be an accurate fern, but we're still just practicing. Another one, I'm going to come here and I'm going to mix both of those greens together. If I want to cover color an area, I might go more like this, where I'm using a little more of the side of the brush. I could go like this. And again, I'm not squishing my brush into the page. Another way you could do it, you could actually, if you wanted to this way, is add a little bit of water like that and come back in and color over that. And you're gonna get some pooling or some puddling, which is gonna give you kind of a, a nice little texture. Now here's another technique. I'm actually gonna use a different color. And notice I'm cleaning my brush off, wiping my brush very carefully on my paper towel. And I can also use my paint rag. I kind of, actually I prefer the paint rag, it reminds me of my dad. I'm going to use this color here, it's kind of a beautiful sort of, kind of a pinky magenta color. And watch this, this is going to be kind of fun. This is called sort of bleeding, and if I put a bunch of water down on my board here and I pick up, I could either have it come from here or from there, it's going to be a little more concentrated from here, and I drop it in, look what that does. So that's kind of another fun technique. These are all things that you can practice. If I clean my brush off again and maybe decide, huh, I'm going to try another color here, I'm going to try that orange and I'm going to drop that in. Look what happens. It's almost like tie-dye without the tie. So again, that's, that's a technique there. Here's another one. This is called a dry brush technique. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to really dry my brush off. And I'm not going to dip it into the water before I put paint on it. I'm going to try another color here. I think I'm going to try that bright blue. And do you see how I'm going to do that same grass stroke that we did earlier. You see, it has a different texture and a whole different look to it. And again, I'm hardly using any water at all and then just the paint. Let's try, I'm going to put my brush away. First off, make sure that it's clean. And I'm going to put that down. Let's try using, this will be kind of fun. Let's try using our Q-tips 
And here's what we're going to do here. I'm going to do like, like one of those Y trees, like this. Maybe I'll do a bunch of my Y trees, like this. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to use the Q-tips here. And let's see, I think what I'm going to do is, I might use that, I really like that pink and I still have some left over here. So I'm going to put it on my Q-tip and then I'm going to, look at that. It's like printing with this and it's going to be relatively the same size. Look at that, looks kind of like cherry blossoms, doesn't it? And what I kind of like is the unevenness and so that there's like a dark area to your, to your um, little spots you're putting on here. Wow, look at that, okay. And I'm going to go back to my brush, pick a little of that paint that we used before and then do some tiny of those little brass strokes that we were working on. And look, I've got some trees growing out of a meadow. And maybe I'll put one of those birds back in there again. But anyway, that's just a little example. This is not at all a full range of techniques to use, but this is just a way to kind of get you started. This is uh, the bleeding technique we did. And you could either let it dry like this, or for a different effect, you could take a clean side of your uh, paper towel, and you could do what I call blotting like this. You could blot it, and look at, we get kind of a fun effect here, but you're gonna get a little bit of a different effect there. And another thing you can do, I've watched my students do this, is I'm just gonna kind of show you this. Sometimes a student will get way more water on their paper than they want, and there's this big puddle going on, and oh my gosh, it's just gonna get into everything, because they put a lot of water on. And so a way that you can, unless you want to keep that water on and let it dry, that's perfectly fine. But you can take your um, paper towel and you can tear it and then kind of come up here and have that paper towel just sort of soak up any of that extra and it doesn't, it doesn't change my shape at all. And then let it dry. Generally when I do watercolors, I like to do them on a flat surface and that way there's, it doesn't give the water a chance to kind of run anywhere. If you do want to have another effect, you can actually take your, your board or whatever it is you're using and tilt it and then it can kind of run around. There's some other things we can do, which we're going to do a little bit later, and uh, but this is just sort of a start here. Another thing we can work on is using the sponge, and I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to clean my brush off, and I'm going to, just for fun, I'm going to make some more green. I really like that green. I'm going to add a little more yellow here and clean it off, <clears throat> add a little more of my blue. I have to admit, sometimes I'm not as good at keeping my brush clean. So I'm going to uh, paint my, my uh, sponge, I could paint it like this, or I could take my sponge and I could just put it right down there. And then I could do, oh my gosh, look at that really interesting effect. I wonder what those could be. I'm thinking, well, they could be anything, but just since we've done it before, I think maybe I'm going to bring my pencil back in again. It could be a tree like this. You could put some branches kind of growing sort of in there so it looks like that. Or you could take your brush and clean it off. Grab, I think I'm going to just, for the heck of it, I'm going to use a little bit of black, just a tiny bit. Now here, I want to have a really fine line. So with my brush, I'm going to kind of keep that tip there until I get, I get just about enough black on this as I want. And that could be a trunk here, like this. Oh, that was a little less than I thought, which is always kind of nice. With watercolor, you can always go darker, but it's really kind of hard to go, to go lighter. I'll do another branch right here, or another trunk like that. And my trees don't have to be green, by the way. They could be orange for fall. They could be pink for spring, um, they could be purple and blue. It is it is entirely up to you. I'm going to make a little cooler green, so I'm going back to that darker blue, and I'm going to mix that there like that. Ooh, I really like that color. I'm going to leave that on my brush like that. Notice I'm not putting my brush in the water. Um, I'm still keeping some of this paint on it if I want to use it again. If I didn't, I would clean it off and then put it down, but I'm going to leave it here. 
Watercolor is nice because it's easy to wash off your brush. Okay, here we go. We're going to be doing other things with watercolors. I think we're going to try fish, try some different, maybe different animals. And oh my gosh, I think we need to draw cars or all sorts of different things. But I'm going to get some reference material so that I can learn a little bit better about how to draw a car. And we'll put that on lesson for sure. And maybe airplanes and trains and tractors. Alrighty, I'm going to leave the paint that I already have here in my mixing area because I'll probably use it on the next lesson. If you didn't like it, you could clean it off, uh, but I'm, I'm going to keep mine. And we use board this time with a couple different techniques. But next time we'll talk about watercolor, nice watercolor paper. And also what happens when you don't have watercolor paper we're going to kind of have some fun with, with regular paper. And even if it warps a little bit because of the water, that, that happens. We're going to make it work. I look forward to next time.